Hey guys, welcome to the Talk Murder to Me podcast. Tonight we're doing a story request for our good friend and Talco Supremo, Rachel. And this story takes place in Russia. Hold on, I'll be right back. What do you mean you'll be right back? We just started. Oh my God, is that a, is that a chainsaw? What? I thought we were going to Russia. I feel like... Black Friday this year started three fucking months ago. They started sooner every year. Like we already got, we already sent catalogs out last month <laughs> about the deals that they're going to have. It's, and it starts like immediately, right? You know, no, like, they, the they've deal, been advertising. They do, they do the deals all month long, like really. Pre, oh, pre Black Friday. They should yep. just make November the Black Friday I know, month. No, because it's like, do you wait until Black Friday to shop? Do you wait until Cyber Monday? What do you Cyber do? Cyber Monday, yeah. It's Sunday, all the Sunday. same, I think. Yeah. I just Honestly, don't know. just do it all on Amazon and do it all I on know, Etsy. I know. You know, my mom is not shopping Amazon anymore. She's boycotted. She's boycotting it. Yeah. I'm well, so. I, I bet you my. It's probably on my dad's boycott <laughs> so list. So basically, too. our Christmas presents are going to suck this year. <laughs> <laughs> she can buy them on Etsy. <laughs> I bought all their presents on Etsy. I do like Etsy. <laughs> Lots of cool comments on the blog. Lots of requests. In a race to 300. I have a new request. From yourself? From Ken Jollins. Well, okay. you're not going to win. <laughs> All right, let me see. Um, Nanya. Like, Nanya B. Yeah, Nanya Is business. That your Nanya, B- Nanya business. Nanya business. Is it Nanya? Is it spelled N U N A A? No, it's N O N N Y A. Nunya. Nunya B. She says, hi. What would you, th- and this is a, on the Mary Bell case. Mm-hmm. I like that case. I think I did a pretty decent job yeah, with that Yeah, I'd one. say so. Hi, what would you think about the comparison between Gypsy Rose and this case? Mm. I, under- I understand there's an age difference, but with regards to taking into account the abusive background, even though it was presented in the Gypsy Rose case, I think the jury doesn't understand this kind of abuse. I think the sentencing was too harsh. Are you talking about the Gypsy case? Because I definitely think that was too harsh. I think she's Even, referring to this one. Mm-hmm. Which, oh, this one? Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, hold on a second. It's oh, a really interesting question. Wait, I have been with you since the beginning. Y'all are excellent. I gained a lot of respect when you did the man kept alive after radiation. Jen, you are my favorite. Oh. Oh, thanks. That Nanya. was a great case. Yeah, it was my one of my favorite yeah, cases. Yeah, that was a great one. Yeah. Straight off the bone. Mm. Yeah. That was a crazy case. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I think it's similar. I don't think enough it's similar. To... Well, I mean, there's so many cases, though, where like a child has a very poor upbringing. Because remember, Gypsy Rose didn't actually kill her mama. The, True. The, her boyfriend did. True. I don't know. That's a good question, though. Definitely worth pondering. Yeah. I haven't uh, thought about Gypsy Rose in a while. I got to write her a letter. Oh, Katie wants to come see us and do a haunted tour. Oh, yeah. She's from uh, Savannah. Or they were living in Savannah for a while. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, we would do a haunted tour, but not the not the jail. We already did that one. And also... Oh, God. Jen's... We can do the other tour. Or oh. the graveyard tour. Jen likes to get touched by ghosts when we're on <laughs> ghost tour. <laughs> Patrick Swayze comes up behind first her. First of all... Starts making a pot. <laughs> first of all, it was my foot. The same foot that this table fell on about half an hour ago. And second she's of all, it, it was real, okay? There were literally 50 people on the tour, and she's the only one that Everyone's gets touched. Everyone's like, okay, Jen. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, That's not Jen. what happened, you guys. Oh my gosh, it happened. I know what I happened. I know it happened. I saw the rat run across your foot. <laughs> I mean, the gel it was a cord. is... It was a cord. The gel was is 200 cord. years old. Lola says, as a born and bred scoozer, this brings back memories of John Venables and Robert Thompson. Robert Thompson, isn't that the the blues guy at the crossroads? No, that's Robert Johnson. Never mind. You know, the crossroads, the blue, yeah, yeah, he yeah. sold his soul to the devil. Wait, no, I don't think that was his name. Robert Johnson, yeah. Oh. Wasn't it? I don't think so. But I know who I you're talking know. about. There was a documentary. It was animated. Yeah. It was really cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I remember the case so clearly, even though I was only a child myself at the time. Oh, uh, an older listener. That's good. But everything changed after that. There was life before James Bolger. James Bolger, thanks for mentioning that. James Bolger was the case that I was 
talking about during the Mary Bell. Whitey Bulger? That's I that was just gonna say, can you we put Whitey Bulger on our request list? No, so James Bulger was <gasps> do you remember in the Mary Bell case I said something about these two kids killed another yes. kid? Yes. And I don't know the story, so I'm not even sure that's 100% correct. But that kid's name was James Bolger. Oh, so oh. Mary Bell's sentence was a lot harsher because that was on everyone's mind. That's the thing. Oh. Uh, anyway, there was a life before James Bolger and a completely different kind of one after him. My mom, I like that. My mom. 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 We call moms pumpkins here, don't we? No. Mom it, is a flower. Oh. Mom is a flower, but mom is the British term of endearment. No, I know. My mom would not let me. Sorry, I just. In my head, I'm like, is it. Is MILF mom? I'd like to. (laughs) I'm sorry. Why is it the first? Wow, well, <laughs> you like couldn't move on from that thought. It's just oh, mom. I'd like to. Fuck. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm oh, still waking up. All right, let me see. Um, my mom would not let me move and adventures past the front porch alone, where no more. God bless the little soul, or his little soul. Uh, here you go ahead and say something. I'm gonna read a few more. I might save them to the next episode. Yeah, I'll save okay. some. Yeah, yeah, I'll save some. So we're gonna stop at Erica. We'll do Erica's comment. On we the can't next see. One. We can't see the screen if that's what you're. No, I'm just reminding myself. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and we do have a new Taco Supremo oh, to oh. welcome Caroline. 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 Mm. She's the reason for the word taco. <laughs> 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 so actually our it's perfect that Katie's joined us on live chat because she is our dedication Ooh. for our surprise shot today. All right. Ooh. Thank you Katie and Christopher. Thanks guys. And yes, I did go to Total Wine. And yes, we have a variety of surprise shots that will last us for a couple weeks. Thank goodness. A couple weeks. <laughs> Y'all, I'm I'm just mm. excited for okay. I'm gonna do this. This is a really good Bloody Mary, Jen. It is Thank, a really good Bloody Mary. Thank you. I really think that I need to get my bartending license, and I think that's gonna be something that I do. But yeah. you nailed it with the pickle juice on, in it. Don't get my secrets away. Oh, and it's Pickle Rick Day. Pickle Rick. I'm Pickle Rick. It's <laughs> National Pickle Day. It's National Pickle Rick Day. <laughs> we should get some fried pickles. I know, right? As soon as I did that episode this morning, when I edited it for you, I was like, oh, I want some fried pickles from Hooters. They make the best. Do they? The Hooters is all the way. I, actually, no, I have been to Hooters. I've, but I've, I've never been to a Hooters, but there is one in North Charleston. But now that I think about it, buying pickles from Hooters just does not seem like a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Eating pickles from Hooters. <laughs> no. I, 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 I Wait, it. isn't Jess working at Hooters? She's working at Hooters? No. She, wasn't she working in the kitchen? <laughs> Yes, she told us this last time. We should open a restaurant called Pickles. <laughs> <laughs> I would totally be down. And we, every, all the guys uh, would wear these green, like, elephant. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's stop. where you lost I, me. I, I kind of have to pee a little bit. You're gonna... <laughs> you just lost me on that one. <laughs> all right, Katie, this is for you. And Christopher. And Christopher. Surprise shots. Surprise shots. We don't know what they are, because they're a surprise. They're drinking mimosas. All like right. Mimosas. Well, cheers to you guys. Cheers. Cheers. Ugh. That is not mixed with the Bloody Mary, I'll tell you that. Was that like Fruit Loop vodka? Ugh. Woo! That was strong. Oh, it was fucking strong. My stomach's burning. That was 99s. Oh, there goes my liver, Black finally. cherry. My liver is finally giving it out. <laughs> hey guys if this is your first episode this is the talk murder to me podcast i'm sitting here with jen and nicole my name is john and tonight we are doing a story request for our good friend tacos primo rachel and i'd like to ask her why she requested one of the most brutal cases that i've ever read about it's a very interesting case this is a serial killer in russia do you want to take a guess of how many people he's killed Twelve. <laughs> you better up that number. Fifty-six. Oh, shit. That's actually really close. Well, probably fifty-six. 
So he's killed 51 on record. Oh. But honestly, this is one of the cases where he's like, wait, did, did I kill her? Or did I kill him? Is this the one where he, <laughs> um, the killer, it was something to do with like a checkerboard or a chessboard? No, that is... um. Uh, uh, that is a Anton chess- or something. Yeah, the chessboard killer. I haven't done that you yet. Did, you did read that book though, didn't you? No, Brienne's done that one, and that's a Russian story. He's a the chessboard killer, and I haven't done the story, but he was trying to hit like I, however many spaces are on a, a chessboard, a chess set board, yeah, chess, whatever, fifty six or whatever. Uh, anyway, he got one away from it, and that wow. was his goal. <laughs> I, this is going to sound bad, but can you imagine the disappointment? I know. Away? I, I'm just, dude, if I was... That the, sounds terrible, I, and I realize no, that. But you know not. what I mean. Because if I was the detective, I'd be like, yo, I'll give you two hours. Just- no. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I guess that's like the sweet satisfaction of catching the killer before he reaches his ultimate goal. Yeah. Let me think about it that way. Yeah, they, let me let me like flip that to make myself sound a whole lot better. But what if he's then like, oh, you thought you caught me before, and then he kills himself. <gasps> oh, oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Twist. Uh, <laughs> That's the way to do it. Oh, you know I what? wouldn't feel guilty if he killed himself. Let me shout uh, out. But that's a little bit of a mix because he like last word, achieves his goal. If his last word was checkmate. <gasps> checkmate, motherfucker. Damn. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we're feeding this guy the right ending to his story. Is he in prison? Is this guy in prison? I think so. I haven't done the story. But that's on uh, Brienne's Among the Dirt and Trees. Real quick, guys. That brings me back to the Randy Stare. I'm sorry. but oh, I, I got remember. Sorry. I really got to shout uh, Emmy out. Emmy J. She left a comment and I told her I would shout her out. But about the Randy Staircase is only going to take a second. We got really drunk on that case. And if you watch, the, if you're a Supremo, then you could see that we recorded for literally three hours for that episode. So we didn't get to half the stuff that I wanted to get to. Anyway, Emmy J on the blog had a really fantastic comment. She says his autopsy, talking about Randy Stair, which I didn't even get to get into, states that he was wearing female undergarments. Hmm. I think he was struggling with gender identity issues and it manifested into a sick obsession with Columbine. Interesting story listening from the UK. Wow. And wow. yeah, and actually I know you just heard about the story with me doing it, but the the fact that you caught on to that is excellent. Because that is a little known thing. And I put two quotes from him. I replied to you. I said, Randy admitted in his videos, because I watched all his videos, there was two quotes that I pulled that may speculate that he was going through an identity crisis. Quote, I'm a girl who's been trapped in a man's body for two and a half decades, and I need to get the hell out. I don't belong on this planet, nor Mm. have I ever. Mm. And also, quote, the girl in me is clawing to get out, end quote. Mm. So thank you so much, Amy J. That was a fantastic comment. I I love seeing comments like that. Mm -hmm. It it really pushes, uh, pushes us forward. So thank you so much. Yes. All right, we're going to Rostov. Tell us what was going on in Russia. Around in the 80s. Cold War. Yeah. Well, like after that. The fall of... Yeah. Com- I don't know. If, yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> well, say it's really the I fall. I thought it was the, the fall of the, the wall. The Berlin Wall. Yeah. That was in 91, though. Yeah, well, the this story I takes... That was in this, Germany. This story takes yes. place over almost 20 years. This guy's been killing. I mean, he's killed 51 uh-huh. people. But this is where he's from, or this is where he killed most of his people at in Russia here. Rostov. It's a big place. Yeah. And also he's killed, and because I, I might forget to mention this in the episode, because this is going to be a very densely packed episode. A lot of information here that I'm going to be throwing at you guys. Lots of penises here. So I might forget to mention he also goes down to Uzbekistan, which is why I mentioned it earlier, and he kills a few people there. Now, a lot of the photos, they're, they're photos of all the victims. I mean, obviously it's fucking Russia, right? <laughs> They don't censor shit. But I'll put all those photos on talkmore.com. They are brutal, man. Brutal. And this guy 
the reason there's a reason they called him the Red Ripper or the Ripper of Rostov. But he's killed all over. He was actually his job, as we'll get to, he was a traveler. When the and forgive me, I'm not a hundred percent as smart as Nicole with world geography or history, but during this time you had I'm trying to not sound stupid here. You had, it was the socialist experiment. That's the word I was looking for. So that is where the, uh, the economy is completely wrapped up and everything, everything is owned by the state. Everything is Mm -hmm. owned by Russia. And not only that, unlike capitalism, where wealth is quote spread. Yeah. Unlike capitalism, where, We'll start a business to compete, and then that will drive prices down and increase supply, stuff like that. You know, a lot of people will say capitalism is is horrible and it exploits workers, which, yeah, I don't disagree with that at all. But I think it's the best system that has ever been invented compared to the other ones. For instance, socialism has been tried many times, and it has always failed. It is where the state mandates everything down to the the last nuts and bolts of anything produced to be accounted for and produced by the factories does that make sense mm-hmm. so everyone is kind of given the same thing and they're there it's, it's basically micromanaging an entire country and the entire economy and, and it does not work as you'll see it just does not work it has never worked for any country that's tried it and it will never work because you need that there's one thing that you need to to drive an economy forward and that's incentive you need I know, I know greed is really bad in capitalism but that incentive to make money helps drive us forward mm. and a lot of people say we're driving forward off a fucking cliff which is probably true <laughs> but it's better than the alternative exactly so don't feel bad when you buy a bunch of shit from amazon because guess what if everyone in this everyone in america we're the buyers in america let's be honest everyone in other countries they're making shit so we can buy if we stop buying we go backwards and we don't want to go backwards (laughs) you know what i'm saying we go backwards we need to keep this fucking bro- th- this boat going now. It's too late to, to jump off ship. If we stop buying, that's when you have uh, uh, deflation of the monetary, you know, the economy mm-hmm. whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Everyone loses their job. Like it's we'll just go into another depression. Yeah, exactly. So that's the that's where we're at now. Anyway, so, sorry. So I think I I shared with you. So one of my favorite classes I ever took in college was politics of Russia, and um. I there were a couple of professors that like I took like every semester I had a class with two two of the same professors because they were awesome and one taught this course and she lived in Poland in the 1980s so this was back during this exact time frame and she would she shared how um during that time, like you could only get what was produced, which was in a yeah. short period of time. So you would have like when they had jeans, everyone would <clears throat> stand online and go get yeah. jeans because they had it then. This was the only time they're going to have it. You never know they when they're going to have it again. Yeah. Same with like pillows. And she'd be like, why the fuck am I standing in line? I don't really need pillows, but I'm standing in line to go get them anyway because you never know when you're going to get them. And it's like the toilet paper and paper towels during the during the COVID yeah. pandemic. So think about it for like every commodity yeah for every commodity i mean everything they, and it, it was so inefficient because let's say let's say tractors all tractors had to be the same color they have to have the same nuts and bolts but if they can't get those then production ceases you know if they can't get those exact bolts of that exact paint color then production ceases you know what i'm saying then you have people like hoarding stuff i'll put all these photos on talkmore.com you guys can go there we're just going to start at a random victim the I mean, boy? <laughs> sorry. That isn't random. <laughs> no, it, it is. It is random, actually. And not random. It, it's, no, it, you auto-generated the list of victims, and this is the one that came up. Uh, kind of. Yeah. I, I did read a book for this, and let me get the name so I can credit it before. But it is called The Red Ripper. And Nicole's going to be reading from the book tonight so all the quotes that she's going to be reading comes from this book 
And let me just pull it up right quick. This book is called The Red Ripper, Inside the Mind of Russia's Most Brutal Serial Killer. And this is by Peter Conradi. And he's written a couple other ones, too. But I think I read another one of his. Let me see right quick. But that's the book that Nicole's going to be reading from tonight. So that's just kind of a credit up front in case, you know, I forget. But yeah, he's written a lot of shit. Anyway, let's get on with it. If you want to describe this uh, boy here. Young. He doesn't look Russian to me. No, he looks British. Yeah, doesn't he? I was thinking that too. Yeah, what the fuck? How funny. Um, He is a white How old boy. Is he? Probably like, I'm going to say 13. Yeah, I was going to say 12. Oh, yeah. He's 11. Oh. Um, dark brown hair. I wouldn't say it's a bowl cut. It's more like a mushroom cut. It looks like a 60s haircut. Yeah, it does. It does. Um, is he wearing a, a tie? Mm-hmm. Is he? Is this a, a school, school uniform, uniform yeah. perhaps? Mm-hmm. And big, he's got big teeth. Yeah. Long chin. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. He does look really British right there. I don't, maybe it's the haircut. Could be. Yeah. So I'll put that on uh, talkmore.com. His name is Sasha, which that that's that guy's name, right? Sasha Cohen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sasha Baron Cohen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I kept seeing Sasha. There's a lot of people in this story. A lot of these people in this story have the same name. Well, probably because there's so many of them mm-hmm. that they just share the same first names. But yeah, Sasha, there's two Sashas that are victims here. Because when I first saw it, I was like, oh, it's a boy. But then yeah. I thought of that one guy. It's a boy's name. Yeah. In a yeah. There was a um there was a basketball player with the first name. So I think yeah, Sasa yeah. Puyovich. I think it was his last name. Yep. So if you're on live chat, you can see that now. But this is Sasha. Sasha Shepol. And I'll probably pronounce his name wrong. In fact, the guy, the guy, the author of the book, there's this one city that this the Red Ripper kills in. And the author even says the city of the impossible to pronounce name of, and it was like literally 26 fucking letters. <laughs> like so that like, one word. So I was like, I don't feel that bad. Now, if he's, if he's going to write that in the book, I don't feel that bad. What is the longest word? Is it anti disestablishmentarianism? I don't know, oh, but I, I feel know. like he just wanted to say that to say that. I did. Because, <laughs> yes, you did. But he's, because when he said the hardest word to pronounce, and I always, confuse that word but i like that i know that word but i forget what it means but i think i know what it means but i'm not going to go into that now all right so sasha he was 11 years old he was killed on august 28 1984 he was killed at the on the banks of the the don river now can i just say one quick thing yeah go ahead i know why we aren't assuming right off the bat this child is russian why is he smiling Oh, oh! I thought you were going to say because he's not drunk and no. wobbling around. It's because he's got a big smile in Russia. So this is another tidbit from my classes. It is not common to smile. In fact, in Russia, it is a or in communist countries, it was frequently a solicitation of sex. So oh. when McDonald's first came, shut up, John. To <laughs> stop <laughs> Russia. She was smiling at Jen. <laughs> <laughs> so when Russia, so when McDonald's first came to the uh, Soviet Union, you like serve your meal with a smile, like you know yeah. that's part of the slogan. So people would be like super uncomfortable having people sm- smile at them who are working when they were getting their food. They were probably <laughs> uncomfortable smiling at them. Yes, I yes, would be like, like, are you giving me sex or a happy meal, or is that one in the same? <laughs> yes, I, w- I would say, <laughs> does this come with an? Out behind the dumpster. Uh, what do you special. What do you mean by happy meal? All right. A happy ending meal. So, well, hey, Nicole, tell us, tell us, and in, in this time, so he killed from nineteen seventy eight wow. till nineteen ninety four. Wow. <laughs> How did Russia let a serial killer go on for this long? There, there's one the thing, same way that the BTK wasn't caught and he had a resurgence. Uh, no, but there's one thing maybe Nicole knows. It's called Glasnost, G L A S N O S T. Do you know what that? Have you ever heard of that? Yes. What is it? That she, is the reason this guy killed over fifty pe- people. She's heard of it. She can't remember oh, what it means. 
glasnost. It was a Gorbachev policy. A Kyle. Oh, okay, okay. I do know it. But think about think about uh, the reason. All right, think about how someone would kill over fifty people. Like, what would make that possible that he didn't get caught? I and it might be kind of a stretch, but this is the reason that they didn't catch him sooner because there was no public outcry. Why was there no public outcry? Because they weren't allowed to. Because people were silenced. People didn't know. Why didn't people know that there was a serial killer that killed news. Because something you about put, the news? Yeah, because they're controlling the news. There you go. So, <laughs> Glosh, Gloshnosht, you got to say it like, um, what's that guy's name? I don't know. Gloshnosht. Oh, that was perfect. That well, actor, Gloshnosht. Sean Connery? Sean Connery. <laughs> <laughs> Jin, I'm smiling at you, Jin. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. I'm that impressed. You're normally not an accent guy if it's not Southern. So suck it, Trebek. Suck it, Trebek. Oh, rest in peace. Yeah, he died last mm. year. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. Have you seen the picture of him spread out on the couch? <laughs> you haven't seen that. No. Are you talking about Burt Reynolds? Yes, yeah. dude. This is famous. I his, thought that's Burt Reynolds. That's two yes. different people. No, Burt Reynolds is famous. Um, centerfold picture yeah yeah we're talking about sean connery those are two different oh, people. oh yeah but that's burt reynolds sean Con- plays sean connery no in the no. saturday night live no daryl hammond plays sean connery and oh. norm um norm was it norm mcdonald plays burt reynolds. burt reynolds okay get near mine sorry norm mcdonald fucking died i know yeah. he just died which i don't think he was that funny i'm sorry i shouldn't have said that I'm turd for I, I don't think I, I just never got his comedy, but I know that I, I saw Seth MacFarlane say that he was the the one of the hardest guys to work with on Family Guy. Really? Like because he just played death, but he you know I, I don't know the whole story. I didn't story, know that but, Norm Macdonald was in Family Guy. Yeah, he played death. Oh, oh yeah, he was the Grim Reaper. That's yeah. right. That's yeah, right. That's right. Death. <laughs> well, you know. All right. All right. Let me Gloshnost is Gorbachev's policy of censorship. And self-censorship. So this is Big Brother Russia we're talking about tonight. And this is very important. This is Big Brother Russia, the whole socialism. If you've read 1984, just like that, where you can't just go and and talk bad about the government no, or, they or whatever. No, they will literally kidnap you and break your fingers so you never write things yeah. again. In fact, the KGB is the one that caught this guy. KGB, that later became the FSB. That later... That later still exists. Completely dissolved into Putin and his greatness. It's just. Do you remember? Putin. Do you remember when um, texting was first a thing, and they had the KGB, like the which was kind of like Google, like you had to text the number. Do you remember that? What? It was the number. It was like a search engine that you texted, like. Never mind. Uh, you guys don't remember. Is it like a one nine hundred hot guy? No, no, it wasn't a nine hundred number. It was oh. like text one 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 for the KGB, and you could like text them. Why would you text questions. the KGB? Not the same KGB. It was a different, a K- different KGB. Yes. Are you not talking about KFC? No. <laughs> <laughs> like some fried chicken, please. <laughs> because they. They genetically, genetically modify their chickens. <laughs> All right. Gloshnost. Gloshnost is Gorbachev's policy of censorship and self-censorship meant that as this guy kept killing, the media never announced it because they were not allowed to. At this time, the whole time he was killing, the media was restricted from bad news. They could not talk about car wrecks. They could not talk about train wrecks. But they could talk about... How well the Soviet Union's doing and, and, and their their five year plan and how everything's going great and wonderful and everyone smells like roses, even though there's dying corpses and mm-hmm. smell like shit. Mm-hmm. Like they, it was just it's kind of like North Korea. Like everything's all happy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This, this the fr- president doesn't poo. Everything's yeah. coming up roses. Which congratulations, Un. You know, you're losing weight. You're looking good. Oon. Something's happening there. You think Oon listens to this? That'd be so happening cool. Here. Is he I, speaking English? I don't know. Oon, I know you're doing your sister. I mean, everyone knows that. That's his Ew. sister up there. He's doing her. What? Yeah, that's his you're sister. You're going to get a shot. <laughs> his, he's married. Just to cover? I don't know. 
Well, apparently Un was a really good guy. I saw his yeah. documentary. He was like a little. Yeah, like he used a, to play basketball. Yeah, he played basketball. What was that on? Uh, that was in the the thing on Hulu. Yeah, are you were getting me way off fucking track? Yeah. No, yep. you're, well, yeah, you're well, getting yourself way yeah. off track, sir. All right, this is a little bit about what we're going to see. And there's plenty of pictures, so we're going to see all the pictures. But <sighs> if you want to read this, Nikwiz. The attack was fast and ferocious. The body so badly mutilated that Sasha's father fainted when he saw it five days later in the morgue, with the eyes literally gouged out. He could not believe a man could have been so cruel. He was so convinced that a bird had done it after his son's death like that he even consulted a couple of zoologists to ask whether crows would have really plucked out Sasha's eyes as he lay there. This guy, the father, the father goes and consults a zoologist because his son, 11 year old son, is laying there. He was all these bodies were found weeks after Mm -hmm. because it's Russia, obviously. It's like cold and no one wants to be out and everyone's drunk. (laughs) Literally, everyone's fucking drunk. Yeah. Yeah. So, and he talks about in the story, everyone. you don't know someone in Russia unless you drink with them. That, that's exactly what the author said. So the, this guy that we're going to talk about, the serial killer, sorry, I'm getting off track. He wasn't a drinker. That's why no one hung out with him and mm. everyone thought he was really weird because he didn't drink vodka. Anyway, this guy's dad, Sasha's father, actually went to a zoologist because his son's eyes were completely plucked out, even though his son's body was completely mangled. Almost beyond recognition. So this is just a little taste of what we're getting into tonight. Getting your feet wet a little bit. This is a very extremely brutal story. It's a very interesting story, uh, but it's extremely brutal. And there's a lot of photos, and they're fucking gross, man. I'm just saying. Anyway, let's freaking get on with it. Here's some more victims. You want to describe these two ladies? Um, one looks older, maybe late teens or twenties, and then the one next to it looks like a little girl, like four years old. A little bit older than that. Seven? You think she's four? Seven. Well, she's eleven. Okay. Do they kind of look alike? Kind of, maybe mother and daughter. There you go. Ugh. Mother and daughter. And I'm sorry, I'm going to put the translations in here like I usually do with people pronouncing it. But who you're looking at now is Tatiana, which there's a lot of Tatianas in this case. Yep. Tatiana Petrosian. Tatiana Petrosian. She's the one on the left. She's the mama, mama bear. And then she's 32 years old. On the right, you have her daughter, Svetlana. Svetlana Petrosian. They were both killed in late May of 1984, the body wasn't found. The bodies, I should say, weren't found until July 27th. So almost a month later, which is routine for this killer. A lot of the bodies that I'm going to show you tonight are nothing more than skeletons, mm. really, because they, they, they take weeks to find. Mm. Some of them weren't even found, especially the ones in Uzbekistan. The guy actually had to go there and show him where he killed these people. You know what's interesting is that these pictures, like even though he was the killer, was only in in practice from that we know of from 1978 to, to 1994. These pictures look like they're much older. Yeah, like these look like they're like I said earlier, like 50s or 60s. Yeah, and I wonder if that has to do with you know the they're state of the, the world. Times, yeah, yeah. Most of these murders occur out in the wilderness. A lot of them in train stations, and. As we know from Nicole telling us about her days where she went in college and got this degree and all this stuff, (laughs) Russia at the time was very slow, very unproductive, very inefficient. So the fact that he has time to pick up a woman or or a boy from a, a railroad station, take them out to the woods and then get on the next train tells you that the trains weren't moving very fast and they wouldn't show up in regular intervals anyway plus there was no one out there so it took weeks for the bodies to find the bodies to be found with the same premise as what i just said these two girls women mother and daughter mother and her daughter were found a month later around the train station they both get off of the train station and they meet this guy 
that actually the mother had already knew. They had already been having an affair. It was six years ago, and then they took a break. And and I'll get into all of this stuff later. But she actually knew him from years past. Now, this guy has already killed already killed over 20 people. For instance, uh, the mother and daughter here is victims 21 and 22. So he's already been killing. But he did have a stint with this woman in the years past. So at the train station, they run into each other again. And they, you know, decide to have a little romantic rendezvous. Well, her daughter is with her. And if, you, if you're asking, well, why would a mother take her daughter out with this random guy in you know, in the, in the woods to have a a picnic. That is why, because they already kind of knew each other. You guys understand? Mm -hmm. They are waiting for the, the next train and they go off into the woods to find a romantic spot because he is going to have sex with the mother and the daughter knows that mama is going to have sex. This happens all the time. Her mom apparently is promiscuous and this happens a lot so when this happens and the daughter's with her she would just simply go a few hundred yards away uh, a few hundred meters away and play by herself while her mama is getting it done to her right so that is what's going on now and honestly like in russia I don't know if this is a fact or not, but I feel like people can just have sex wherever the fuck they want. And I don't think anyone's going to say anything, you know? I don't know. I don't know about that. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you want to go to Pornhub and check out some of the videos in Russia and see if they have sex outdoors. They do. But I don't know. It seems like they're, they're just laissez-faire with the whole... Oh yeah, when, when getting, was the last time that you were doing some research on this? Cloud. I feel like in, <laughs> I feel like in Europe there's a lot less taboo about sex than there is in the United States. So that doesn't completely shock me. Yeah, we're a nation founded by Puritans. What can we say? Mm. By men, by phalluses. That's everywhere, but you know. All right. So Every, everywhere has got a monument that's shaped like a penis. Basically, they're wait they're waiting on the train. Mom lays down. This guy, Andre, which we're going to talk about, puts down a, a a blanket. She takes off her trousers. He starts having oral sex with her. Now, he tries intercourse. She's horny. The daughter's in the wood, in the bushes, playing with a new doll. Actually, the guy had uh, a doll with him that he gave to the girl just for occasions like this. She is getting it done to her oral sex. He decides he wants to have... He wants to have intercourse with her. He's going to put his penis inside of her right there in the middle of the in the clearing. Anyway, he cannot get an an erection. He tries to have sex with her. He tries to have intercourse with her, but cannot get an erection at all. That's important. The whole not getting an erection thing. That's part of his makeup. He never gets an erection. It's not vodka dick. Fucking dick. And for, no, actually, that's a good point. Um, what well, they call it? Whiskey dick. Yeah, right. I she know. Was making but, a, we're in Russia. Oh, but, but, when in Russia, you drink vodka. You just gotta slap it around a few times. Hello? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, shit. Is this thing on? <laughs> Ow, don't. <laughs> you gonna hit it like that? I don't know. <laughs> Wake it up. Hello. Oh, my eye. What the fuck is that? Uh, So Andre, the killer, could not get an erection. And then the mother says, quote, you call yourself a real man? Oh. (laughs) End quote. Reaching into his bag, he produced a long, sharp kitchen knife, and before Petroson knew what was happening, he plunged it into the side of her head. The whole forest shook with her scream, but he didn't stop. As the blood and her suffering finally gave him the sexual satisfaction he craved, he produced a hammer and began pounding her with it. Oh, no. So, I mean, think about it. They're, they were about to have sex. She says, you call yourself a man. I mean, who else is there? The The daughter is can hear this there's no one else around 
the daughter hears the mother. Well, the daughter hears her mother moaning, and then she hears that blood curdling scream that her mother lets out when he takes the knife and quote plunged it into the side of her head, like into the temple. Just, I mean. Holy shit. She started screaming at that point. He takes a hammer. He just has a bag. I'll show you the bag he carries. It's like a little um, mantle. Mantle? Satchel? Satchel. He's a little satchel. Takes out the hammer hammer, and just starts beating her with it. She's dead. Obviously, the, the daughter, Svetlana, runs back, sees her dead mother, and then he... And then she bolts. And this is from the book. It says, quote, there was no sign of the kindly uncle whom she had been riding on the train. In his place was a wild animal in a scene straight out of a horror movie. He was running stark naked through the forest towards her with a knife in his hand. Oh, my gosh. He takes the knife and he stabs the little girl. Now, think about it. That knife still has mama's blood on it. So he is stabbing the little 11 year old girl, her her daughter, with the same knife that he used to kill the mother with the same blood on it. I mean, that's just fucked up. Right. And then after that, he, quote, sent a shower of hammer blows down on her, end quote. Mm. It took three or four weeks to discover the bodies at all. In fact, they weren't even reported. Complaints of an unpleasant smell, that smell of rotting human flesh, is what gave it away by a a local train rider. And uh, there was one other really uh, detail, and this is going to get more into the the future killings because they get more brutal. There's escalation, right? We talked about this before where... A serial killer will kind of try things out, and then after murder, 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 he gets better at it, and he kind of crafts his his work, if you will, Mm -hmm. and he gets more brutal usually. And that's what is happening now. So now we're right in the middle of his murder spree. So this is the first time that he severs the little girl's head and tosses it into the bush. Now, this is the actual skull. If you want to look at that skull right oh there. Oh, my gosh. That's terrible. Dude. That, I mean, that's a, there's just a gaping hole in it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. It almost looks like there's a little animal inside of it. Yeah. Do you see that? Oh, really? Look. Oh, shit. That's fucked. I think there is. I think it's just no. to matter. Dude, you could see. Look, look at the very top right of that skull. It It looks like a hammer hit right at that spot. Mm-hmm. You know how it didn't break the... Oh, my God. I mean, look at that. D- describe what you're seeing to everyone listening. I mean, there's just a huge hole in the side of the head. Yeah, so there... And what, it's not a perfect circle no. either. What we're looking at is a human skull. This is of the little girl. And, I mean, it, it's a side profile of the skull. And the right side... I think that's the right side, right? Yes. The right side where the right ear would be is completely gone up to the top of the crown of her head, all the way down past her where her ear would be. Mm -hmm. It's a huge hole. I think the hole is probably makes up 40% of the skull, at least. That is huge. That is, that's hammer. That's a hammer right there, dude. But you can see right there how brutal this guy is. And this is, this is kill 20, 21. Excuse me, 21, 22. He's, he ain't even halfway there. You're going to see some shit tonight. Mm. <laughs> I don't know how oh, else to react. Should... <laughs> it's fucked, man. I mean. What do you think this guy looks like? I bet he's going to look totally fucking normal. I, I think he's probably like a small man. He, no, actually, he's he was. I'll show you a picture of him before he's all crazy and shit. But he was actually a really good looking man. He was a uh, he was a teacher. Oh no! Yeah, he was a language teacher. <laughs> I told you <laughs> the job is stressful. <laughs> well, I mean, where not do you th- that stressful? Well, he was a uh, children's teacher. That's where he picked up his uh, <sighs> lust for the. The children. Oh, oh, 
This is your man. Well, I wouldn't say he's attractive, but perhaps we should go back. To... <laughs> he's fucking crazy. He's he almost looks like crazy look. He looks like Gollum. Yeah. This is my favorite picture of him. If you want to describe this one, and I'll put these photos on talkmore.com. We're looking at the guy uh, Andre Chikatilo. Andrei Romanovich Chikatilo. He a uh, Russian bald. Right there, I think he's like fifty six. He's wearing an Olympic shirt. He's smiling. He looks like he's having a good time. And if you want to describe this photo, this this is my favorite one of him. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh he's got his dick out. So. <laughs> he's just in his jail cell, this wiener out. <laughs> is that the jailhouse uniform? Yeah. Look, he's behind bars. No, he's wearing that same shirt from the last photo. <laughs> He is. Is this it? Was, yes. This was during an interview. So I guess at the end, he's like, oh, did you want to see my penis? <laughs> the guy's like, what? Hello? <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, look at him. He's just like nonchalant. Yeah. Like, oh, would... did you want to profile on my penis? <laughs> like, what the fuck? This is front page news. <laughs> Holy shit. This is Glashnox right here. He's a shower, not a grower. See, I'm I'm a I'm a grower, not a shower. So mine looks small, but it gets a little bigger. I don't, think, <laughs> I don't think anybody wants to hear anything about your penis. That hasn't uh, stopped him before. No. All right, let's get through his. Um... Can you please take his penis <laughs> off? The screen? Yeah, I don't want to look at this. All right, fuck it. Oh my god. All right, all right. Story. All right, let's barrel through his childhood. Barrel through in it right now. All right, this guy known as the Red Ripper, he was born the 16th of October, 1936. He was born in Yablachnoi, which means apple. I guess they would name, at the time they would name cities in Russia after things that they could not grow because of the inefficiency of the fucking socialist party. I thought it was the communist party. <laughs> Yeah. His father, Roman, was, which is Roman, the guy off Secession, mm-hmm. which is a great show. Yeah. Fa- um, Kiernan Culkin just hosted Saturday Night Live last week. Oh. I like, he's a good actor, man. I love that show. That's a great show. It's a great show. I know you guys are barreling through right now. Yep. No, we're not, because somebody didn't tell us all the episodes were I out. I thought so all we gotta, the episodes were out, now so we now we have wait. to wait. All right, this is Andre the Red Ripper, born October 16th, 1936. His father was a collective farm laborer. laborer. So when the communist, and guys, I'm sorry if I get the word communist and socialist mixed up. This guy was in the communist party. I do know that. But was Russia not going through socialism? Can, can you explain the difference real quick? Or is that like a not a quick thing to explain? Um, okay, so socialism is on the, the very, 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 very far no. left. Left of the spectrum, socialism, communism. Yeah. And, Which is like everyone uh, gets equal they, pay. Bo- bo- both of them are on the left side of the spectrum. So they are they have a lot of similarities. So what's the big difference? Uh, okay, so if I say one or the other, forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm a capitalist just, they're, motherfucker. They're communist. Yeah. Just, yeah. just go with communism. <clears throat> So, the father was a collective farm laborer named Roman. A little real quick about the collective farm laborers. The state owned all the farms. They were actually privately owned at one point before the communism came. And then the state repossesses all the land. And now it's some system where you work on the farm and you you make money it's not actually the state owns everything, which means everyone owns everything, if you want to believe that. But you, you're you actually working farming to produce for Russia, for Mother Russia. However, that doesn't fucking work, right? Because you have some farmers going ham, hard as a motherfucker, working their asses off, and then some oh, not doing shit. You know I what I'm saying? I didn't know that's what that stood for. Yeah. Whoa. I didn't either. Handy as because uh, I feel like I've heard more whole hog versus ham. Whole hog, different expression. Like I hear that more often. Whole like hog, whole, 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 whole hog means like raw dog. Ew, raw and dog and whole hog. Okay, it's time for some more bloody Mary. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, when your cousin nope. comes over. Can you <laughs> I got to cut that because I got some cousins. Yeah, you do got cousins. And we're trying to keep things on the DL. Um, you know, <laughs> we should go to Lewis. <laughs> we haven't been there in a long I know. time. We should go next week on my mom. Father was a collective farm laborer before he got uh, picked up for drafted for the military service, trying to stop this guy, I don't know, Adolf something. Mm. And when he actually joined the Red Army in 1941 after Hitler decided to invade Russia. He fights Hitler and was captured as a POW. He was saved by Americans in 1945. He was in a concentration camp. I couldn't find out which one. I guess I didn't realize that Russia was trying to fight against the Nazi party <clears throat> and then got taken over. I know this news doesn't really uh, make it on a TikTok or anything, but there's some really interesting things that go on in the world besides the narcissism that uh, we, we like. For instance, there is a... A Nazi accountant it was a female that worked at oh, okay. uh, the concentration camp. One of I can't remember which one. It wasn't a well known one. It was in Poland, but she was found recently, and she was required to show up for a trial, and she fled. So, and she's oh. ninety eight years old. Oh my god! Right now, and she fled. Damn. So but- that is going on in the world. Well, there was the recent documentary about the an accountant who was put on trial too as yeah. a male. This is a I female. Think that was on, this is a female. That may have been a Netflix. I, I feel like the sentiment is that they're just gonna fucking let it go. Well, but you, I, you, I do, I do like the fact that they're still chasing fucking Nazis. I love that. I, I do, just, but it's 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 some symbolic. Yeah, at this I know, point. I know. It's very frustrating because when I I did the that Colonia Dignidad podcast. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize how few Nazis were actually prosecuted after. I mean, sure, there's the Nuremberg trials, mm-hmm. but there were only like 120 Nazis that were prosecuted from that. So Andre here, he grew up in the famine. There was a huge famine in Russia, kind of like the Great Leap Forward for China. It was almost the same. This socialism system that I was talking about, the communism system where they all produce for the state doesn't work. Famines often occur during that. But it's kind of interesting because... Everyone is, I don't know about now, but everyone at the time was required, even on this story, to show up in the fields, no matter how old or young you are, to bring in the harvest. I feel like Americans are like, what? Bring in the fucking harvest? We just go to Harris Teeter. You know what I'm saying? But they they actually had to go to go cut down the crops and all this stuff. Like everyone as a collective. You know what I'm saying? He was a shy, quiet boy, and he was always very secretive, which... I feel like a lot of people were secretive in that state at the time. But, for instance, he didn't want his peers to know that he still wet his bed until the age of 12. Ah, bedwater. I don't know if he was molested or not. I I don't think so. I know he had a huge disdain and hatred. He was livid about his father, hated his father, even though his father was a decorated war hero. But as I was doing my research, if you go... And and to join the Red Army and you are captured as a POW, don't come back alive. That means that you are cooperating or whatever. This is Big Brother Russia. Like, no secrets, shut the fuck up type of shit. So when he came back, he was actually looked down on for being a POW because he survived. If he died in war... Andre, the Red Ripper here, Andre, would have grown up differently. He would have been respected in school, not looked down on. Oh, your father is a... Not that he actually did share anything, but that was just the perception. Yeah, that was the perception at the time, and probably still is, let's be honest. But the whole Big Brother thing, if you you get caught in war, fucking kill yourself, man. Like the Japanese used to do. Kamikaze. They don't fucking do that shit anymore. They should, though. That shit was badass. No, need to bring that shit that's terrible. Back. So, you know what's interesting is that... Uh, the... No, I'm talking about, like, the, when, when the Japanese used to go to war, the mother, and this is from some book I read, the mother had given one of the, the her son, 15-year-old son, a sword and said, don't come back if you get caught. Kill yourself with this. That is fucking hardcore well, they're shit. They're all about like pride and honor and stuff. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily agree with that though. I think there's. Um, well, you never fought a war. 
I mean, there are some myself. there are some amazing stories about people who no, have been POWs, like yeah, are fucking pussies. John McCain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, John McCain. And and you have the the I can't remember his name, but Unbroken. Um, he was a prisoner of war and had an amazing success story. Really? Yeah, he Freaking, was a prisoner um, of war. Paul. Uh, Paul um, the movie, the guy they they made the movie about the Paul, runner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, I remember yeah, he was, he was a, a Japanese I didn't, I didn't watch the reporter? movie. No. Oh. Um, and then. Uh, so I was just re- reading. Uh, oh, the the guy who was the original glorious bastard. Yeah, he that was a prisoner a, of war. That guy should have a statue built. And his, him. I loved his. Oh man, his quote. Anyway, I, I will keep. Now, what's go- this quote? Say this quote. So he was a prisoner of war um, after when he was captured. Do it, and it's a very different story from the this actual is glorious character. bastards. Yeah, but essentially, he was a prisoner of war for a time. And he negotiated a deal that was for a surrender of a of one city right before the war ended. And so this Nazi, he was in he then he was the prisoner of war. This Nazi general, I can't remember who it was, and he's is be, the he's begging to this guy like, "You won't hurt my family. Like, please don't kill and torture my family." And the guy just says, "Who do you think we are, Nazis?" And walks out. Oh, <laughs> burn, motherfucker. <sighs> This dude is badass. Holy shit. A lot of those Jewish people are fucking badass. I ain't gonna lie. They know that um, Krav Maga shit. Holy fuck. They'll fuck you up, Well, he was not Israeli, but that's okay. He was Jewish. Well, he wasn't there's, Israeli. Yeah, 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 yeah. there's a difference. Yeah, he wasn't American. All right. Anyway, anyway, we gotta get on with this. His classmates, they kind of ostracized him, and he was a little short, pewdie type of kid growing up. Mm. Now, he does grow up to be tall and domineering, but... When he was in child school, he was very short and bullied. He also had chronic short-sightedness, and he would refuse to wear the the glasses, which... No, they're too thick? Well, he didn't want to be called four eyes and stuff like that. Plus, not only that, in Russia at the time, no one had glasses because no one could afford them because the factories didn't make enough of them, Ty- type of shit I talked about earlier. But he would... He would try to hide the fact that he couldn't see even the classroom board in front of him or whatever. And he was really, he was really self-conscious about that. So he wouldn't tell anyone. The students actually started calling him Baba, B-A-B-A, which is a slang for a woman, which means he actually, as a child, had breast. Mm, Interesting. Because that's, that's the term for a Jewish grandfather. Baba? Isn't it? Um, I don't think so. Maybe I'm wrong. What Qu- I thinking you thinking of? a bubby? Maybe. <laughs> Quote. That had to be a mother. Yeah. Right. Quote. At school, I was an object of ridicule and could not defend myself. He later wrote, "If I didn't have a pen or ink, I would used to sit and cry." End quote. So, at 16 years old, he actually hit a growth spurt. And now, instead of being the puny little kid, he was the tallest kid in class, the, the biggest kid, the most muscular kid in class. No one would mess with him. He was still an, an outcast, but no one would make fun of him to his face kind of thing. He was strong. And he actually, I'll show you his picture. He was a good looking guy, a really good looking guy. And that's one of the things he used to pick up all these random victims, right? Because most of, most of these victims are random. So... He found a passion when he was 16 as an editor of a school newspaper. And that passion was interpreting and spreading propaganda and news. Well, propaganda is what they would call news in Russia. And he fell in love with communism, 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 communism. That's all he wanted to do. He was obsessed with the theory. He would read Marx, Engels, all those, all those guys, Lenin, all those people and he just got obsessed with it. However, at this time, even though he was really good looking, ridiculously good looking <laughs> and tall and broad shoulders, he had trouble with women because of one reason. He couldn't have sex. He first tried at 19. His sister, his younger sister, hooked him up with one of her friends who was 17. They tried to have sex the first time. Like, dude, most kids, when they lose their virginity, they're like, boing kind of shit not for him at 19 years old being tall and broad-shouldered and you know 
he was a homosexual. He loved the female body. That's what I was going to ask is maybe he was he gay? No, he wasn't gay, but he did have a lot of male victims. And and I was there's a lot of serial killers that switch from male to or switched from female to male. Right. But the fact that he was having like erectile dysfunction, maybe it wasn't. I I don't know what I could not find out what exactly it was i don't think anyone knows but it was not because he was gay trust me but he did switch between male and female later down the road in his victims but i was reading one psychiatrist who was well versed on the case he was talking about that's more of a domineering thing Mm -hmm. he wants he was the domineering role raping and killing females now he wants to try to you flirt with switching the role, like maybe pick up males kind of, it's, you know, I, I don't know if I buy all that, but that's the re that's the reason that serial killers like him do that apparently anyway, but no, that's a good question for some reason. And moving on through the rest of the story for the rest of this guy's story. Remember this guy cannot get an erection when it comes down to having intercourse. You remember the first murder we talked about, mm-hmm. or the second murder, what did that woman say? You call yourself a man? Mm-hmm. You call yourself a man, John Perry? <laughs> 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 Shit. <laughs> he could not get an erection. Never. At night, if you can't get an erection at 19, something is seriously wrong. You should have fucking... What, what, what's the words? Young, dumb, and full of cum. Ew. Ew. Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't That's like a that. terrible saying. <laughs> Shit. What does it mean that he can't get an erection? Like, what does that do to his psychology? Like, what does he think of himself? He feels like he's less of a man. Yeah. There you go. That's very important for a man, especially being a teenager. That is going to fuck you up for life. I'm telling you, if you can't, if you, you can't, you're about to lose your virginity and you can't because you can't get an erection. That's not good, man. At all. Okay, so the girls here would mock him, and a lot of the women that had mocked him obviously ended up getting the hammer. So this guy, even though he couldn't get an erection, he has he's very self conscious. Conscious. He thinks he's very he thinks he's in, inadequate. So he runs to communism and the communism ideals, and he takes that as his passion. In 1957, he is drafted as a communication specialist in the military. His peers actually started thinking he was gay because he's not a drinker. And I'm not just saying that Russians get drunk. The author talks about that if if you're in Russia, if you don't drink vodka with your comrades, then you're not you're trustworthy. Sus- you're suspicious. Yeah. You're suspicious. That don't is exactly what I was going to say. Don't you are sus- suspicious. So I don't feel bad saying that anymore because as I was re- you know reading this book, he goes into it. It you do look suspicious if you do not drink vodka with your comrades. Well, I guess it I'd is, be suspicious because I wouldn't be drinking vodka. Oh, and so good. this guy yeah. is not a a drinker at all. The whole time during his murders, he's not a drinker. In fact, the sexual aspect to it. He describes it as being drunk almost. In fact, when he would kill someone, he would almost and multiple times get hit by a, a passing car because he would feel drunk, but he wouldn't drink anything. It was just that sexual like power. Delirious. Yeah, just like in a So was he did he have sex with the corpse? Uh, let me let me get to that. He actually You're skipping ahead, Queen. Sorry, I, but I, I, it, se- it seemed like he, the that was able to get his sexual jollies. I, off. I will say this: if you really think about his psychology, and let me put his penis back on here. No, just please don't. <laughs> Let's just. Oh. just. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted you to show his penis, so you know he's not inadequate. He, they did not find he's still inadequate. They did not find semen in any orifice okay. of the victims. Okay, so he's still not able to. There you go. But he did. But he's this. This is all sexually motivated, one hundred percent. All right. So he felt inferior, even in the military. His comrades were thinking he was gay. When he became a sexual sadist, it's like a light bulb that goes off. When you're just sitting there, you know, you're on the bed. Your wife is beside you. She's on Wayfair.com, and a light bulb just goes off. You know, and then you realize you're a sexual sadist. (laughs) 
that that felt a little (laughs) close to home for how much I'm on (laughs) things shopping for the house. All right, he says. Wait, you're a sexual sadist? Did I miss something? I don't know. I felt like that's what he was alluding to. I've been fucking smiling at you all episode. Like the McDonald's thing. Anyway, <laughs> that's not. That doesn't mean the same thing. I don't. John. All right. He was quote, making a joke. All right. This is this is a quote from him. Quote. While he was, or this is a quote from the book. Excuse me. Quote. While he was sitting cuddling a girl during a date, she suddenly made it clear that she had had enough and tried to push his arms away. But for a moment, he wouldn't let her go. He enjoyed the feeling of tension as she pushed against him and tried in vain to unlock his muscular arms after just a few seconds he gave up and let her go but in the middle of the struggle he could feel himself ejaculating in his trousers fuck that was supposed to be something gin red so he was able to yeah but do you remember the story we did about the train guy yes matuska matuska sylvester macusta or whatever guys like this i don't really understand it but they'll they'll they don't have to touch their members to get off it just happens like a wet dream almost or is that pee i don't know what that is no that comes that's out. that's a jack- oh, jacket okay you gotta wash the sheets <laughs> <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> i'm so sorry to all of my co-workers who listen to this <laughs> this first date where he was at where he she was trying to get away from him and he wouldn't let her go. And just a few seconds, it was a few seconds. Then he gets off. That point is when he's like, Oh wait, I don't like intercourse or whatever. I like the domineering part of it. I like when they're struggling and he's actually going to refine that because that, Specifically, is not the real one. There's an actual thing that he likes that gets him off. It's, it, I've never heard of it before. It's, it's very specific. All right, guys, we are going to cut it here for today. We'll release part two of the episode tomorrow. Uh, This episode got a little longer than expected, but on tomorrow's episode, part two, John is going to go through all of the murders in depth. It's super gruesome, so be sure to stay tuned, and thanks for listening. Checkmate, motherfucker.